NASA is finalising plans to put the first woman and the next man on the surface of the moon by 2024, not far away. The mission will go above and beyond previous moon landing missions with the goal of establishing a sustained presence on the moon. For more, I'm joined by Dr Crystal Johnson, NASA's Deputy Director for Technology and Research Investments. Doctor, good morning. Thanks very much for joining us today. So can this be achieved in such a short space of time? Uh, well, if we get all of the right people to the table at the right time, if we get the resources that are going to be required, anything is possible. That is the way that we do things at NASA. So do you, do you think you'll be able to get all of those resources in place? I mean, bearing in mind, it's been a long time since we've been on the moon. It has been a long time, and, and our administration is working hard right now to try to make that a reality. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes, but right now things are on track. So uh, the fact that um, Donald Trump has, has, has given you know, NASA an increased amount of funding, he's sort of given that a shot, shot in the arm, uh, can you summarize the attention that his administration has put on NASA and, and how much that has helped things, if at all? Yeah, you know, it's it's very important for us to have global and universal support for space. It's been wonderful to have this administration to support NASA and the, the goals and objectives that we have at NASA for putting the first woman and next man on the surface of the moon by 2024 with the long-term objectives of actually going to mm. Mars and having a sustained presence on Mars. So what do you think we can learn from being on the moon again that we don't know already? Yeah, so at this point in time, when we went to the moon, we went for a quick visit. This time we're talking about having a sustained presence. It's very difficult, and I'll just say, the first time we went, if we had gone one week later, there was a solar storm that happened, and the astronauts would not have survived. We have to figure out how to actually survive and thrive, not just visit when we go and explore other planets and other worlds. So what are you sort of suggesting, a, you know, a colony of some sorts? Absolutely. We do plan to have a habitat where humans can actually survive and thrive on the surface of the moon in preparation for having that same kind of capability on the surface of Mars. What would that habitat look like? Oh, wow. So w what we're going to be doing is, is using the lava tubes. So we'll have robotic capability. When we go to Mars, I'll say the ultimate goal is to get to Mars. We will be exploring the lava tubes. And in those lava tubes, we'll, the robots will have cameras on the tip so that we can actually explore and stream it back to the students and the schools, the universities and, and mm -hmm. elementary schools. But there, we will actually be able to look for ice. And when we find ice in those lava tubes, we'll have an inflatable habitat that can inflate. And that will have humans living in. You'll get a chance to see a little bit of that in my StartCon presentation this week. Oh, okay. All right. So, and then after that, 2024 uh, in the moon, what sort of time frame are we looking to sort of set things up in Mars and after that? Yeah, for Mars, it, to have human presence on Mars, it's going to be significantly longer, at least in the 2030 time frame. And so it, it depends also on, on how many resources we get in order to be able to make that happen very quickly. But we don't have to wait for human presence. We can certainly do things to, to discover and understand the Mars environment and what it's going to take to live there before we actually have humans ready to go. All right. Well, it is an exciting future anyway, Dr. Crystal Johnson yeah. from NASA. Really appreciate your time this morning. Thanks for joining us and good luck for your speech uh, and that conference that's taking place. Thank you so much.